Hey everyone! In this video, I'll be showing you how to collect live moss and turn it into a beautiful centerpiece. Moss is nature's carpet and it's a plant that thrives in most areas other plants can't. To help your indoor moss garden grow, you're going to need a few things. First is an acidic environment or soil, compact soil, and an area with indirect sunlight and lots of moisture. To make a moss tray or any type of moss decoration, you can either find different types of moss in nature or simply purchase moss sheets from your local gardener. In this video, I will show you how I find moss in nature, grab some pieces, and then transplant it into a wooden tray that will then be displayed indoors. I go out and find patches of moss and grab small pieces from different areas. And it's relatively easy to find moss growing in most climates. Moss is found in mostly shaded areas, so for this video, I went into a foresty area and found moss growing on the side of the road in large patches. And I also went deeper into the wood and found moss just growing on the ground, in random areas, on trees, and even on the roof of a tiny house. If it is not your property, you should most likely ask the owner before you snatch a piece of their moss. Hunting for moss in nature, you can find different species of moss and different with different textures, looks, and colors. This variety that you're able to find in nature will add a dimension look to your final piece and if you still cannot find moss in your area in nature or you just don't want to you can also always go to your local local garden shop and find some there when collecting moss you will need some sort of tool to scrape moss off of surfaces so I use the butter knife and mostly just my hands and when you remove the moss try to get it in large sheets as it will be easier to work with later. Make sure to grab small pieces of moss from different areas so that the surrounding moss will regrow that empty patch and you can harvest sustainably. Once you have collected all your pieces, you will then need to spread them out and pick out any weeds or extra pieces of woods that might be stuck to your moss. And it's best to rinse the moss sheets with water to make sure you get any unwanted nasty stuff out. Also, when you're rinsing your moss sheets, make sure to not use water with chemicals in it like tap water because anything too harsh can either kill or turn your moss sheets brown. So for me, I spread them out and I left them on the ground overnight and it rained. So the rainwater cleansed it all out. I made three wooden trays that I was gonna use to display my moss. One large, two smaller ones. And the large one I painted all white with some acrylic paint and the other one I left in its natural brown and then the last one I painted pink so when you're if you're gonna use something like wooden and it's painted over make sure the paint you use is either waterproof and make sure it's fully dry before you put your moss on it
So for the base of your tray or your display piece, you will need something for the moss to stick to. Since moss likes compact soil, I collected some soil from a fallen tree. You can either do this or you can use any type of normal gardening soil. Also, if you are collecting soil from outside, you can bake the soil in your oven so the heat then kills off any unwanted bacteria or you can just use the soil how it is. In my tray, I created some small mountains to give some heights I mentioned to the moss. When you are arranging your moss on your trays, you simply have to take the sheets that you find most aesthetically pleasing and place it in the areas you want. So I use different moss sheets of different species and moss that I also found on wood and I arrange them how I wanted it. Once they're in the space that you want or that you think looks the best, you just pat the moss down firmly and eventually the moss will get used to its new environment and start to establish itself and grow fully. Here you can see I'm working on the larger white tray and for this one I'm using normal gardening soil and it worked just fine like the, the compact soil from the dirt. So either one you use will work. Moss is very, it, it grows wherever. It's not a picky, a picky plant. So again, I'm just placing the moss in the areas I like and firmly patting them down. Once the moss is fully in place, make sure to thoroughly water it. And for my trays, you can see that I'm using different species of moss in different sizes and I'm placing them right next to each other. And just if you're wondering, Yes, they will do completely fine when they're mixed with other moss. They'll just grow in their own individual patches. Yes, as long as you keep them thoroughly moist, they'll do perfectly fine. And yes, here I am showing you, I also put moss in a little pot because you can leave your moss in pots and it will grow just fine too. Also a tip, if you plant your moss in a terracotta pot, the moss will eventually crawl down from the dirt onto the pot, which can be a nice look. This is because the terracotta is porous and it holds moisture, which helps the moss grow and stabilize itself. If you're using a ceramic pot like I am, the moss will most likely just stop when it hits the pot and just stay where the dirt is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you are able to go out in nature 
and find some live moss and transplant it into a garden that you can have in your home. Let me know if you guys have any tips or tricks you use when collecting live moss. And let me know if you plan on making your own moss garden. Let me know how it turns out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.